And now a highlight from Animal Radio on iHeartRadio. And a few few weeks back, Laura, you did a story on the technology that could be affecting our animals that we don't know about. Yeah. Could be uh, sounds that we don't know about from our electronics. You know, I know my dog freaks out when there's like a brownout and, and the UPS thing comes on for like the computer backup. She hears that noise. She hears that, beat, that noise and it just freaks, freaks her out. out. Yeah, yeah big but time. We can hear that. I guess so. But maybe there's there, more noise there might associated be that, that we can't hear. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was a great article that we referenced in that. It was uh, an article, and I forget the, where it was originally. Was it Parade Magazine? It might have been Parade. It might have been syndicated. But quoted inside was Dr. Jeremy G. Turner of the Southern Illinois University School of Medicine uh, Department of Pharmacology. And uh, he joins us right now. Hi, Doc. How are you doing? Hey, I'm very good. Nice to, nice to hear your voices. Do you have animals at home? I do. We have, uh, <laughs> well, as of latest count, we have three cats. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, a dog. And we have a little guinea pig and, um, and three children. So depending on how you count. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and occasionally we've got other little critters that our uh, that our cats will bring up to us. So, so yeah. So we may never know exactly what our animals hear that we don't hear, but we could always take a stab at what they might hear. What do you think is going on, in your personal opinion? Well, so you know, I study I study ultrasonic hearing in in rodents primarily. So I'm I'm interested in deafness and and uh, in fact understanding how humans and how hearing goes bad, as in when we create tinnitus ringing in the ears. So I'm really interested in, in how to, to figure that out. And so through the process of studying hearing in, in, uh, in, in mice and rats, we, we've essentially uh, come to understand that, you know, the animals that are in our lives are hearing sounds that we have no idea about. Uh, they have a hearing range that extends far higher in pitch than ours. And so... Um, uh, you know, and this is for good reason. Um, there, there's a good relationship between head size and how high a frequency you can hear. So, for example, the smaller the head of the animal, the higher pitches they can hear. So little bats, for example, oh, wow. can vocalize really well. Little mice can, can hear, you know, up to 100, 120,000 hertz. Um, and then, then bigger animals like elephants, they hear low-frequency sounds. So uh, it has to do with, with uh, a couple of factors, but we think the biggest reason for that is that it helps them localize sound. So um, hearing high frequencies uh, is really important if you've got a little head. And uh, if you need to localize where sounds are coming from, you can actually measure in your brain the time it takes sound to travel from one ear to the next. And the change in pitch as it hits the head on one side and only some of that sound gets to the other. So, so yeah, our, our little animals in our lives, they hear sounds that we don't. And increasingly, the technology that we're bringing into our lives turns out is creating a lot of a lot of ultrasonic noise um computers televisions uh, pretty much anything with a little motor in it uh, a little electronic switching circuit boards um these things these things generate these high-pitched sounds that we're not uh, we're not aware of you know when the, the house cleaning or the uh, housekeeping comes to to clean up the office they bring in their vacuum and i ju- it just it drives me crazy. I hate the sound of vacuums. It, str- it literally stresses me out. I have to leave the office. Could we be stressing out our animals with sounds that we don't know that we're doing that to? Of course. Um, sound is, is a great way to stress out mammals, period. And so, um, you know, it, if you've ever had a baby in the house, you know that's the case, right? I mean, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a great way to communicate in the dark. So, you know, uh, and around corners. And so... Um, you know, a lot of animals have aversion calls, you know, so that they can warn their friends that, hey, there's something bad in the neighborhood. And, and you know, it's not just pitch, you know, how from low frequencies to high. It, it has to do with intensity as well, how loud it is. And so a louder call is more arousing than a, than a more quiet call, of course. And, and you're right. And a lot of times our environments are absolutely just filled with noise. And we just, we adapt to it. We get used to it. We, we At least we tell ourselves that we do. But but below the surface, you know, our biology is impacted by that. You know, our, our heart rates are, are higher uh, if we're in a noisier environment. We know that people in the workplace, if they've got a louder computer uh, or a noisier environment, they've got higher, you know, risks of cardiovascular dysfunction, and they, and they make more errors in data entry, and they're more anxious in work. And so we, we feel like we have it under control sometimes, but even sounds that are in our environment that we're just not even 
psychologically aware of, they're impacting us. Uh, and it could be doing the same thing to our, to our pets. And so our cats and dogs at home, you know, we're kind of bathing them in sounds, of course, that we can hear. And if we hear a, a loud clunking going on in our refrigerator, we, we call the repair guy. Um, but, you know, if we don't hear it, what are we going to do? And so whether it's a, from a fluorescent light or, you know, new fancy LED lights can do a similar thing. I want you to hold that thought because we have lots of questions about LED lights. We are with Dr. Jeremy Turner. He's a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Illinois College, and he studies the sounds that animals can hear, but humans can't. And we have lots of questions about LED lights in particular. Go ahead, Dr. Debbie. That was a big concern I had because we recently had switched all of the light bulbs over from the old incandescent bulbs to LEDs. And now after we're hearing that the lights could be emitting some sound that disturbs my pets, I'm kind of, I'm bothered by that. And uh, I wanted to know what you think about what I need to do. Well, unfortunately, this is one of those things that you can't hear it. And, you know, we develop some equipment that, that we sell to, to measure it. Uh, unfortunately, measuring this kind of thing can be somewhat expensive because you have to have these really kind of high-end microphones that are sensitive to these high-pitched sounds. But but if you turn on a device, um, and if you've got a pet, you know, in the vicinity, within a meter, within a few feet, for example, of, of the device, and if you notice an, it orienting, it turning its head or, or doing something different as a result, you can be pretty sure that it heard that. And, and you know, sound drops with intensity pretty significantly. And so high-pitched sounds especially if they are generating them at a light, at a computer, if you're a few feet away, it drops really noticeably. And so the animal, if it's bothered by it, it can, it'll, it'll go away. It might leave the room. It might not want to sit on your lap while you're working on something at the computer. Mm. Um, but it might, you know, just walk five, six feet away and lay on the floor where it's, it's not hearing it anymore. And so these high-frequency sounds, they're, you know, you can think of them like bat, you know, sonar. They, they act like um, little ping pong balls they, they shoot in straight lines you know most sound kind of bends around corners you can have the lawnmower running and you can shut your window in the door and it still seeps through um, but these high frequency sounds they'll hit a wall and they'll bounce back like a ping pong ball and they don't bend very well so if you have a source like that it's oftentimes contained within the device itself so a light for example if it's got a good seal on it it's going to hold all that acoustic energy in but if it's got a crack in it if it's got you know, the plastic cover on it isn't in place. It might seep out. And in your computer, it, it, it actually is coming out of the, the, the fan area. Mm. And so all those electronics mm. inside, they're, they're blocked by the, you know, the metal or plastic housing of the computer. But where it's breathing, where the fan's blowing in and out, all that acoustic information is coming out there. And it'll hit the wall and it'll bounce back. And if you give it four, five, six feet, it'll drop to a level that's, you know, not going to be a big problem. But and you're talking mostly about sound because that is your specialty. The LED lights, I know they flicker. I mean, they're, but humans can't see it, but they, they do go on and off at a, at a rate that maybe dogs can see, do you think? Well, you know, I'm not a vision expert, so I try to make it a practice not to delve into areas I'm not I understand. expert in. But, but there are switching mechanisms in those computers, so the power is switching on and off at forty or 50,000 times a second in those things. And so that can create this acoustic kind of transient that, that we can hear or that the animals can hear and that we can measure. But but you're right. I mean, LED lights, one of the great and problematic things about them is that you can get them to emit different wavelengths, different colors of light, you know, along the spectrum. And so uh, different species are sensitive to different wavelengths. So, you know, we, we humans, you know, have, have uh, color vision that is, you know, uh, of the three basic varieties. And we know that that other species have, have differences, so that they can see some colors, but, but in different ways. And so that moves a little bit out of my space. But, sure. but you're, you're, the point is that, yeah, just like sound, there are things in our visual environment, uh, and not to mention olfactory. I mean, they're great sniffers, yeah. you know, our cats and dogs. They, there's a whole world out there of sensory information that, that, that we're not even aware of that is impacting them. The more we learn about it, the more, more we learn about our relationship with them and how to make it better. And, you know, I don't want to scare people. I don't want to have all the, you know, homeowners, uh, pet owners uh, at home thinking that they're not going to be able to use lights in their home anymore or computers. Um, but, but we, we, you know, it's another factor to take into account when you're, when you're interacting with your loved ones to, uh, to recognize that they might be hearing things that you don't. And, and we see that this is especially likely going to be problematic for more sensitive animals. So, you know, we all know 
the dog in our history or in a friend's family or something that's especially hyper and, and reactive to things in the environment. So the same sound that's heard by, you know, your dog might be not a problem for him, but for another it might really set him off. So maybe we should allow for a space, a place in our home that our animals can go to where we don't have any computers or electronics or anything where they can just go and chill out if they need to? Yeah, and that, that you know, when you say it out loud, it kind of sounds like that's good good advice for all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking yeah. just a room for all of us to One go of into. Those rooms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and especially, you know, you might think that this would be important for, you know, a kennel environment, for example, where, where you have your, you know, your little space for your guy at night. And in that particular environment where you can't escape, you can't move around and get away from something, you might want to be more careful about how much electronics you have in that space. And... Another thing, while it's not really common in in households, um, a lot of uh, more industrial environments are going toward light deactivators that are ultrasonic in nature. So they actually installed these at our college, at at Illinois College where where I teach. And these essentially turn off the lights in the room if it doesn't sense any activity. So it shoots out ultrasonic sound and measures what comes back just Ah. like a bat. And oh, wow. it, we, I measured this at a, a 125 dB. So it's like a jet taking off. It's loud to them. Yeah, wow. and it's, it's 40 kilohertz, so we're not aware of it. But, you know, if you, if you have a, you know, um, a personal assistance, uh, you know, dog, for example, helping you out, coming into your classroom in, at college or, you know, in a business environment where some of these might be installed, you can imagine how arousing and problematic that might be, and you're not even aware of it. So we've heard tales of you know, research facilities where, you know, animals are taking part in, in uh, studies that they might have seizures when they when they hear this sound. It's so loud. So. Oh, wow. This is all very intriguing. Yes. I, Who would have thought? Yes. I appreciate you spending time with us. We're going to have to do this again. Obviously, it uh, is worthy of more conversation later down the line. Sure thing. Dr. Jeremy Turner, professor of psychology and neuroscience at Illinois College, joining us. You're listening to Animal Radio. Visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android.